Galaxy Z Flip 4, the screen is broken on the inside, but the other screen is still good. The heat gun is at the maximum temperature with the air output at 50%. I started with the back, but you can start with the front also. You need to remove the front and the back glass of this Flip 4 in order to start removing all the part. After heating, I used a suction cup to pull the back glass slightly. Then I inserted a guitar pick in order to start moving the guitar pick on all four corners of this back glass. This is going to help me remove the back glass very easily and without any damage to anything on the bottom directly beside the back glass. So after removing the back glass, I will start working on the front of the device, the front cover screen. So here also I heated for 40 seconds with the highest setting on the heat gun, 50% air output. For this one I used a smaller suction cup because I couldn't use the big one due to the separation between the glasses on the front. Once I got the smallest opening I inserted my green scalpel blade which is going to be a placeholder then I used the guitar pick next in order to start removing the front of the device. I started with the side very close to the hinge because I do not want to start near the screen in order to avoid any potential damage to the front cover screen. So this is why I did the side where the hinge mechanism was, then I did the sides, then I finished with the front of the device. So near the cameras and around the screen, the front cover screen, you need to be very careful while you insert the guitar pick. Do not insert the guitar pick far inside because you risk to damage that screen. So at this point, I felt confident enough that I have separated the front of the device and the frame. So I started pulling the front of the device away from the screen, but I kept in mind that this has a flex cable for the screen. So here you can see the outline for the screen the danger is the side where you just saw the guitar pick was. Now I just need to disconnect this plastic covering the flex cable. Then after that I can disconnect the flex cable for the front cover screen. So at this point what needs to be done is removing all the screws. Then starting to remove all the component one by one in order to free everything out of the frame. So I started with the back and removed the wireless charging coil. Then followed by the loudspeaker that I removed. Exposing all the flex cable connections on the charging module. The next thing is to remove the battery cable. There is a small plate covering the battery cable. After removing that I disconnected the battery cable and then I can disconnect and remove completely the wireless charging coil. The next step is to disconnect all the flex cables that you see connected to any board at the bottom of the device. Disconnect the big flex cable coming from the top onto the charging module. Then you have one screw to remove in order to access the charging module and remove it completely. Next, at the back of the charging module, there is this cable coming from the top connected there. So you need to disconnect that cable so that you can free the charging module completely. So at this moment, on this side, there is nothing to disconnect. So we need to move on the front of the device where you have the cover screen and the motherboard. So the first thing is to remove this plastic covering the flex cables coming from the hinge mechanism. So something that you should have done or I should have done earlier was to disconnect this battery cable at the same time that I disconnected the first one. This is the proper way to do it. But doing it this way also does work. It will not damage anything. But the proper way is to disconnect all the battery cables at once. All the flex cables disconnected, removed the loudspeaker plastic covering. So next I'm going to remove all the batteries and I held all the flex cables in one place using a tape. Then I used a little bit of alcohol that I poured on top of the battery and pushed on the sides. The alcohol is going to the bottom and soaking the double-sided tape that is holding the battery and the frame together. Next, I'm using my flat metal tool. This tool is not sharp and cannot cut the battery. So the bottom of the battery was the place where I could insert the tool all the way to the frame and then I started pulling the battery out. If you have enough alcohol at the bottom, you will be able to pull the battery very easily. So next, any excess alcohol that you see on the inside, you need to wipe it out. As soon as the excess alcohol is out, it will dry automatically. So for the second one, you need to do the same thing. Add a little bit of alcohol on top of the battery and push the alcohol to the sides and the bottom of the battery. Once it has been done, you can insert your tool, the flat metal tool that I'm using or any plastic tool that is thin enough. You insert it at the bottom of the battery and you start pulling the battery slowly without using a lot of force. If the alcohol is at the bottom and soak the double-sided tape, 
removing the battery should be very easy. Same thing as the first one, once you're done, you need to wipe out all the excess alcohol that is still inside the device. After that, it will dry out. So normally the hinge should not have any noise. The noise that you're hearing might be the cause of the inner screen not working. For the rest of the removal, I removed all the screws that were on this plastic covering the camera and the front speaker. Then I disconnected the front camera flex cable, then removed the SIM card tray. After that, I can simply lift the motherboard of this Galaxy Z Flip 4 out of the device. Make sure that you remove one screw that is holding the motherboard to the frame of this device before you remove the motherboard. For the removal of the camera and the front speaker, make sure that you hit the front of the device where you have the screen, you hit it slightly, then you start to pull the camera and the front speaker. You will need a flat blade like the green scalpel that I use in order to pull the front speaker without damaging it. For the vibrating motor J30A, you need a flat blade to go under the vibrating motor and pull it out. So you need to do all this if the new screen that you purchase does not come with all these small components already pre-installed. For the reinstallation, you need to reinstall everything in the reverse order and you finish with the batteries. As for me, I'm going to insert the motherboard that I removed on the device that I completely disassembled on this one. This one has a good screen that is working. I tested the screen. After swapping the motherboard, I should have a working Flip 4 with a new screen. The device with the new screen is the US version. The device with the old broken screen was an international version. On this motherboard, there is no flex cable port for the 5G antenna that is on this US version. So I will leave it that open and then later just remove the 5G antenna if everything is working correctly. After you have reinstalled all the major components on the new screen, you finish with the battery flex cables. You need to connect the battery flex cables at last for the smaller battery and the bigger battery. So once you have done all that, you can also connect the flex cable for the front cover screen. So currently I have connected everything. All the flex cables have been connected. The only thing missing is the plastic covering, the front camera and the front speaker. So the device is closed and I press the power button and it has started to turn on. The new screen is starting to turn on and this was the old screen, the old broken screen. So the device turned on correctly, but the screen is not working. The screen light up for one second and then it turned off and there is no way to turn the screen on. The device is on, the cover screen is working. When I press on the power button, the inner screen does not take over. The inner screen simply does not work. So it is time to do some troubleshooting because I know that this screen is working. I had tried to use the device before with the old motherboard and it was working. The screen will light up and everything was fine. So the first thing that I was doing was to put the old motherboard inside the device. The old motherboard should work without any issues since this was how it was before I did remove the motherboard. The device was working. So the issues got carried over onto the new motherboard. So simply the issue might be something about how I put everything together. So this is why I'm trying wireless charging to see if it is going to work at least. If wireless charging is working and the device is working correctly, I should see the device charging on the inner screen and also on the cover screen at the same time. So here it is a failure. The inner screen is not working, but the cover screen is showing the wireless charge. So I tried something else, but the device is still acting up and the screen is not working. So here again, I moved a few components around and the device started working. I can access the screen. The new screen is working. I can also access the keyboard and do everything. So at this moment for the front of the device, the only thing missing was the cover screen. I didn't connect the cover screen flex cable, but everything else was connected to the motherboard. And also when the device started working, the back of the device had everything connected and all the screws were on the device. As far as the front, the one with the smaller battery, all the screws were connected on the plastic covering, the front camera and the speaker. And the last thing that I can add when the device started working, I turned the device on with the device unfolded. 
So try all these if you have the same issues, put everything together, then open the device and turn it on. It should work that way. So I connected the cover screen and restarted the device to check if everything will work with the cover screen inserted. The cover screen is working, it takes over while the device is closed and if the device is unfolded, the big screen takes over. Before I sealed the device, I added the plastic covering, the flex cable for the cover screen connected to the motherboard. Then after that, I can add B7000 around the frame in order to seal the front of the device. You will need to add a small line of B7000 where the double-sided tape is going to sit. If you purchase double-sided tape for the Galaxy Z Flip 4 also, put that double-sided tape on the inside of the device, then remove the plastic covering the sticky side of the tape. After you've done that, it is time to close the front of this device. Make sure that you align the front glass and cover screen with the frame of the device. Start applying a small pressure for everything to be aligned and start to stick together. Then you can start applying big pressures in order for everything to be really tight together. If you use B7000, you have to use constant pressure clamps or these type of paper binding clamps for at least 20 minutes for the B7000 to start to cure. If you use double sided tape, you need to use this, but it is not 100% mandatory. Keep in mind that after doing any repairs like this, your device is not water resistant until you can certify it with scientific measures. You will need to do the same thing for the back. If you have removed everything from the back of your old device and need to reinstall everything on the back of the new screen. For any spill B7000 that you see, you need to rub it with your finger and it is going to go away. Thank you for watching, subscribe, like and share and I will see you on my next video.